Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now, Brendan Coughlin, and he played Tad T. Stevens in Dawn, Days of Our Lives. Hey, Brendan, how you doing today? I'm doing great. That's a hell of an opening. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I know we were talking for a while, about 20 minutes now before before this started. Yeah. I wanted to hear a background about me and telling me all the stuff I've been up to. And now we're at, it's time for you to see what you've been up to and to talk a little bit of Days of Our Lives and been a fan since 95 of Days of Our Lives and absolutely awesome. loved your character. I mean, he, was, he started out as a side character and he really developed into some major storylines with Will and Sonny and all all that which I'm really excited to get into yeah yeah they were great storylines he was a he was a fun character i missed the dude yes absolutely so the first question i do got for you how did you get your start into acting uh my start came from let's see so i got i moved to california um i got a commercial agent and theatrically they wouldn't represent me because they're like you're not sad you have no credits you know sorry mm -hmm. You know, um, so I started commercially and I submitted myself on Craigslist for an independent movie, booked it, walked into my commercial agent right into the theatrical department, waving the contract saying, somebody needs to rep me. <laughs> They're like, we're not going to rep you on that project, but this is funny enough and good enough that we'll take you on. And then from there, I got, I think I started on CSI and then I went to Days shortly after that. Nice, so. nice. Yeah. So what was your audition like for Days of Our Lives? So initially I, I auditioned for Will and um, I got down to the wire on Will. And then I, um, it was Dylan Patton, that actually the first Will mm -hmm. that played that character. And then the producers came back with, with um, an audition for me for Will's best friend. And it was only supposed to be two episodes. And then after two episodes, it turned into seven years and almost 300 episodes. Right. So it's been a fun journey on that show. That's awesome. And unfor like, unfortunately, when you first debuted, I didn't see it because I was uh, in college. And as, you know, college people go, they end up, uh, you know, having all-nighters. And <laughs> I, I, I lost track of days for a couple of years there. And I, I never saw Dylan Patton uh, play Will. I never saw him. I started when Chandler Massey was in the role. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, that was like, I think Dylan was only a year for Will. Yeah. And they realized that they wanted to go in a different direction fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Chandler came on, who's he's one of my favorites. I loved I loved working with Chandler. He was great. Nice. Uh, and uh, and then after that was Guy. And Guy was great too. You know, it's yeah. all they all brought something different to Will, mm -hmm. which was fun to play off of. You know, I mean at yeah. the end of the day, the relationship between T, my character, and Will always still re remains the same. So it was mm -hmm. fun to see everybody bring different flavors. Yeah. to that you know yep it was a good it was a fun journey absolutely so the one storyline that i remember clearly because i'll be honest and my podcast knows this i'm a gay man <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh I, I i'm not easily offended at all but i remember the scene and it always stuck with me not in a bad way but like yeah. a damn like this this is a really intense storyline is when you called uh was it sunny i believe you called a fag and yeah. uh yes and uh you took it hard with will and sunny you know being gay and you pushed uh you know saying the sunny is the reason why will came out all that stuff so yeah what do you what were your thoughts about that storyline because i'm sure like a lot of gay people could take offense to that right oh my god yeah and like and most of my male friends even though i'm straight most of my male friends are actually gay <laughs> <laughs> and in fact um one time when that storyline came out, I was at a bar called the Abbey on, oh, did I lose you? Yeah, you, there you you're here. I was at a bar on a Sunday afternoon for a friend's mm -hmm. birthday, the Abbey. And this older guy comes up, taps me on the shoulder and he goes, T? And it caught me off guard. And I was like, uh, yeah. And he goes, don't you think this is hypocritical? And poured a drink on my head <laughs> in front of all my friends and ran away. And I was like, it's, it's a TV show. Right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, but when they started that storyline, I remember going to the producers and I, cause I, you know, we only get our scripts like four months in advance mm-hmm. and go to the producers. And I was like, listen, I got to have redemption. You cannot do this to me and, and blast this out there and not let me get any redemption. And they're like, we don't know. We don't know how the public's going to react to this storyline. So we don't really know yet. You know, we can't yeah. promise. And, um, you know, and over time, they finally ended up giving T redemption, which I, you know, I really, I was appreciative of, but I thought it was an important storyline. You know, it had to be played. Uh, my choices were to play it as ignorant as possible. Yeah. yeah. And it is the first gay storyline that happened on Days of Our oh, Lives. Yeah. 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 And it was, um, you know, I wanted to play it really like somebody who was ignorant, who had no clue mm-hmm. what yeah. was going you know like yeah. a lot of a lot of how people reacted it say in the 90s now yeah. like it's it was it was an evil character <laughs> he yeah. was that and you but know? you know somebody's got to do it i guess yeah absolutely and it, it it did play off well because don't forget like you said this is a time that like you know homosexuality is becoming a, a you know more widely known and widely accepted and this yeah. is something that you know in your character's sense t um, he is, he was, he didn't know the lifestyle. He didn't, he wasn't accepting, but he became exactly through there. Yes, exactly. Like that. He got, he had to have a journey of like, because he was so ignorant that over time, over the years, it was the knowledge of his friends. And I don't know if you remember, but the bachelor scene, I did the bachelor speech. And at the mm-hmm. end I said, you know, you guys really taught me how to be accepting and mm-hmm. And that process is something that's very manly. And yeah. that was like the end of his bachelor speech. And it's so true. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. um, that's where he learned. He learned through his friends, you know, yeah. a lot of, a lot of times people, when they react that way, they come from a place of not knowing, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, and you're not the first person to actually not just tell me, but you know, in general, like they had something happen with their storyline because Camila Bannis, who plays Gabby, yeah, Gab- yeah, she yeah. got death threats uh, for her character yeah. being so evil. Yeah, people, I mean, people take it seriously. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I'll be out in public and you know, someone will come up to me and they're like, I've been watching the show since '74, and some of them say they like me, and some of them are like, I didn't like you at all. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm I'm actually a nice guy. I don't really right. Care. You're you're just playing a character. You're you're doing your job as an actor. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, trying to feed my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, what was the hardest part about filming uh, for just filming a soap opera in general? The pacing. Okay. The pacing of it is really difficult, and as time went on, the pacing went faster and faster. You know, you're getting 80 pages sometimes shooting two episodes a day um you know you like it's just some of the times it's too hard to learn all the mm-hmm. lines uh ahead of time you kind of gotta mm-hmm. learn as you go like each scene like you have an understanding before you shoot it but each mm-hmm. scene like while we're doing blocking that's you know i'm, I'm studying my lines right there you know because <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta keep it moving that's a big part of that that was yeah that, that that's tough and uh what do you believe was the best part about filming days? And what about the worst? Oh, the best part is I really like, I really enjoy the people I worked with. Nice. Like they're a good family, you know, like they, they are, it's a good group of people there. And yeah. you, know, you, when you shoot on a show for seven, eight years, you become really close with those people, yeah. you know? And yeah. um, I was really proud to work, you know, next to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the worst part I would say was leaving you know <laughs> you know I, yeah i missed that character and um and it's also you, you get comfortable with the people mm-hmm. you work with and and being a part of an iconic show yeah so uh, i would say the worst part was leaving yeah absolutely and i did some research on your character because i remember some stuff but i didn't remember everything because it's been a few years since you've been on if i and correct me if i'm wrong y- yeah you weren't really given an exit storyline were you not really not on the last one no it's not on the last one i think you know changing of producers and different writers and storylines they focused on other ones and it was uh they didn't really allow for a proper exit mm-hmm. so like you know, i've always thought well maybe you know maybe they'll call t back maybe they won't who knows right 
Well, yeah. speaking of different writers, let's make Brendan a writer right now and put the pen in your hand. If you could give T a proper exit for that episode, what would it be? <laughs> oh, if I had a write, ooh, what a great question. If I had a write, <laughs> an exit storyline for T, T would be working at Club TBD. There'd there be a big go. family dinner and he'd get a call that he booked one of the biggest jobs for the Coast Guard. And he's, <laughs> like, and he's a weapon specialist and he says goodbye to everybody. This is his dream job. And that's it. And he fades off into the sunset. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to fade out of me. <laughs> so, i love it i love it yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah i didn't watch days today yet i watched maybe half of it while i was eating i made a homemade uh meatball subs and uh i was i usually got uh, what'd you say and i said sounds delicious yeah I, I just got done eating it right before the interview maybe about 20 minutes before and i only got to watch like the first half hour of days and uh, uh chandler massey's on and freddie yeah, smith is no longer on days but they have zach tinker uh, playing the role of Sonny, and uh i was watching them and it's, it's getting interesting it's an interesting storyline with lucas now of uh, did he kill you know uh really? abigail damara oh wow yeah I haven't, I haven't watched in a few years, so I'm like, I haven't gotten like, you know, caught up on what's going on, but I did a fan event, um, maybe a couple months ago. So I got to nice. see Bill, still good friends with like Billy Flynn and nice. a, a of the show. And they kind of caught me up on some of the storylines going on. And I'm just like, Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I was yeah. talking to Teo about a lot of it, especially cause he's still on and, uh, he, he was telling me a lot of uh, interesting stuff that's set to come, but without giving anything away because you can't spoil it because they film six months in advance. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. They're, they're getting more and more advanced with like the film. Like when I first started seven years ago, or no, when I, I think like 2006 or seven mm -hmm. when I started, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're only like two to three months in advance, only shooting yeah. one episode a day. And then by the end of it, there it's mm -hmm. two and a half episodes a day. Yeah. And yeah. You know, episode 11,845 in studio two and then yeah. 11,866 in studio one and you're just mm -hmm. like I, I don't know what's going on right now yep. <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's slightly confusing but it really it, is yeah but it's a great show it's a wonderful show Great it really people. is. I remember when I was younger, my mom got me into it and she didn't try to get me into it, but I was sick from school the one time. And I don't even know if I was really sick, but I was sick yeah. from school the one time yeah. and I, I came down from my room and I, she's watching days and it's like one o'clock or whatever. And I go in and I'm like, uh, what do you watch? And she's like days of our lives. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it and the first thing I see is Marlena turning into a Panther because she's possessed yeah. by the devil and yeah. instantly. Oh, yeah. They went a little, you know, they were a little more ballsy back then. <laughs> Some of these, uh, people coming back from the dead. Devils, yep. this, right? They're still doing that. Dr. Rolf now, he has a magical serum that he gives you an injection and it brings you back alive from the dead. Really? Yes. Yeah. There's a couple of people. Bo just came back from the dead uh, on Beyond Salem. Uh, he, uh, they uh, had him chirogenically frozen until they can remove his brain tumor with uh, three magical prisms. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> sounds right, right? A little futuristic. I like it. Yeah, a little futuristic. I like it. Sci-fi date. <laughs> absolutely so the last question i do got for you uh do you have yeah. any projects anything at all social media websites appearances anything at all that you would like to promote to the listening and viewing audience so no specific projects coming up in acting okay. i'm actually just i'm jumping back in acting like i said before my you know, i took probably two three years off mm -hmm. with um, my father going through cancer like you had mentioned before about yeah. your dad um and then uh so now i'm back in la um, I have a new team and we're going back at it full force, but I've also fallen heavily in love with writing. Nice. So now I'm starting to write my own projects as well and go down that path. Um, so nothing on the docket right now, but there will be soon that I can promise. Awesome. Well, I, I'm pretty sure you have IMDb. So if anybody uh, needs to uh, see what you are up to, um, if they're watching this a year from now or six months from now, and they want yeah. to see what Brendan is up to, they can go right to IMDb and they can uh, check out your page. And I'm sure any projects you got going on will be updated yep. on there. Yeah. I always post ahead of time too. And yeah, like, 
Instagram, same thing. So yeah, there, awesome. there, there will be stuff coming up. I promise awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Brendan, for joining me today. Yeah, Scott, this was great. I'm glad we finally got to meet up and link up. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, you're great. Awesome. I appreciate this. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Scott. All you right. too. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.